Why do you think there seems to be this just overwhelming animosity between like feminist culture and just men in general? You know what I think it is, is are you familiar with the story of Icarus? Yes. <laughs> I think feminism flew a little too close to the sun in a lot of ways <laughs> is what happened is, you know, we got so carried away with this like, Women have intrinsic value. We have this divine feminine and we should be worshipped and we should be spoiled and we should be catered to. And we should have not only all of the same rights as men, but also more, you know, <laughs> and, and it, it became this thing. And in part of the journey of feminism, which has brought so many amazing things and freedoms and great greatness to my life, it it's also kind of brought some toxicity because what ends up happening is we create these very feminist spaces where it one person starts complaining about men in some way you know it used to be just occasionally complaining about our husbands while having tea at brunch but now it's people complaining about their husbands on the most popular viral social media platforms <laughs> in the entire world. And the kind of like domino effect that is it that ends up happening from that is pretty colossal. Like you can even see it in the comments. Women will be like, great. Now I'm mad at my husband or like, great. Now I'm going to go start a fight with my husband. And they're not actually joking though yeah like the yeah. the stuff that seeps in and the kind of collective hive mindset of yeah men really do weaponize their incompetence and they they don't really you know care about domestic engineering like we do and all of these talking points just kind of are what we use as women to start filling our cup and it saturates and marinates inside of us. And I have felt it too. If I've spent enough time in these places that are telling me like, your, your man doesn't really love you if he asks you to pay bills and all these kind of wild sentiments, you know, it's like a poison. Yeah. It becomes a poison in yourself. So it's not I, true. Well, and, and it's, um, one of the things I tell guys, um, is don't, don't complain about your wife to your friends. Um, it, it's, it's one, it's one thing for everybody to tell like stereotypical jokes that you would say, like in front of your spouse. Um, it, some of those are, I think are perfectly fine, right? There's, there's obviously inherent differences between men and women. And a lot of times that manifests itself in the way we think about things. Like for instance, I love the, uh, <laughs> I love the woman, woman explaining the, uh, what is it? The coffee cup, uh, or the sink mug sink cup. Yes. Yeah. So explain, explain sink <laughs> cup real quick, because I, I want to, I want to talk about this concept. Oh my gosh. Yes. So I noticed, and many of my other female friends in my life have noticed that our husbands do this thing where they just leave a cup right by the sink. And it would always drive me crazy, especially because of the, the previously mentioned poisons fluttering around in my brain. I would think things to myself like, this is weaponized incompetence. He's doing this on purpose to make me clean up after him. He's not putting it in the dishwasher. He's not putting it in the sink. It's like a declaration that he can do whatever he wants and I just have to deal with it. It's sick. He's so, he's so torturous to me. And then there was one day that I was just at home kind of cleaning up some things by myself and I drank the last of my water and I just kind of in my head placed it down and I was like, I'm just going to put it here because it's kind of like, you know, if I'm done with it, I can just, it's right next to the dishwasher. I can put it there. And if I'm not done with it, it's right next to the sink. So I can get <laughs> more water. <laughs> yes. <laughs> and that was when I realized my husband is not out to get me. He's just a genius. <laughs> it's very different things. <laughs> well, so, okay. Elaborate on this a bit because I had no idea. Like, first of all, I totally do sink cup, right? I also do like <laughs> sink fork and like there's, there's various things where if I know, if I know throughout the day, like maybe I'm, I'm going outside and then I'm coming back in and I'm going outside and coming back in. I don't want to keep using, I don't want to use more stuff. I don't want to, I don't want it to get more dirty. I don't want to create more work, yeah. right? I'm just doing this because, and then at the end of the day, I'll, I'll wash it or throw it in the, and, um, 
And it never, it never, I guess on some level I can understand like somebody looking and seeing that and I'm like, why don't you just put it in the sink or why don't you just rinse it out and put it away or whatever. But it, it would have never occurred, I think, to 99% of the male population that this would be the sort of thing that a, a, a woman or their wife or whatever else would look at and be like, this, no, there is a deeper meaning here, right? It's not just, yep. I mean, it's not like I would have understood lazy. But no, no, it's not just lazy. It's there is a nefarious, you know, they, they, they all put up their bat signal over at the freaking patriarchy headquarters. And yes. this is about asserting dominance. <laughs> and it's like, and it's like, ladies, ladies, we are not that coordinated. Like we are not. Yes. Yep. Um, so, so what is it, what is it about? Do you think, do you think part of this is just the way that, you know, men and women, the way I describe it, right? There's masculine traits, there's feminine traits those traits can manifest themselves in positive ways or negative ways. And, and the goal is to try to train yourself to, to manifest your traits in positive ways. Do you think that this is something where this is a feminine trait with the way that women think about things and connect things in ways that men don't just going in a negative direction? Or do you think it's something different? That's, that's interesting. Yeah. It's, I don't want to give away like too much of the magic of woman's planning, but I feel like ninety nine percent of the episodes can basically be explained with like assume positive intent, mm. right? And I think that's like a big missing piece. And I couldn't tell you exactly where it comes from or why we so often just like jump to these negative conclusions. But I will tell you, it's remarkably common you know like i look back at my own childhood and i realized that i was woman-splaining to my mom long before i was woman-splaining to the internet because you know we'd be in the car and i remember my mom saying things like your father didn't clean the bathroom again and i i don't know why he's doing this i don't know if he's trying to punish me for something if he's mad at me about something and i'm like Mom, I think he just forgot. <laughs> I, yeah. I, I really, I don't think it's that deep at all. I think well, he just he started playing solitaire and got lost in the sauce. Yeah. <laughs> I think, so I think that's interesting because there, there is something that you can look at biologically and say that, you know, Jordan Peterson talks us a lot about that, that women are, are more prone to like negative feelings or thoughts. And yes, some of that, you that can, is true. And some of that you can look at as, as, as a, um, a defense mechanism, right? Like if you, if you're actually more like physically vulnerable out in society, right? Well, then you're going to be more cautious. You're going to be, you're going to be more, you're going to be thinking about risks more because if they have a, if the risk has a higher impact on you and it's the same thing for men, when you put them into a, a certain environment, when I was in Iraq, mm -hmm. I had a lot more negative thoughts, right? <laughs> because I'm walking, no. now I'm walking down the street where I can get shot at, right? Whereas I don't have those negative thoughts when I'm walking in most of America, maybe not, to, you know, maybe not like Detroit, but like, you know, in most places I don't have to have those thoughts. But so if you're prone to it, then it, it makes sense how it could develop and it could manifest itself in a way to where you're seeing, you're reading more into it. But here's what I want to know. So you're spot on, right? Like again, 99.9, .9, but now Am I going to claim that I've never been passive aggressive toward my wife in some way? <laughs> yeah. was, no, I'm not going to claim that. It's it's that's not my style. But every once in a while, like mm, fine, I don't care, you know. But what what caused you at at a young age? Was it was it? Do you think it was a part of a relationship with your you know dad or brother or whatever it was? Was it was it spending time talking and kind of understanding the way that you know men kind of think about things? What was it that caused you at a, at a young age to be like? I think he might've just forgot right? instead of assuming or, or kind of allowing yourself to be pulled into this idea of like, no, 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 let's get to the bottom of this mystery. Yeah. Like I said, I, I grew up with an amazing father. So I think even just then I knew better. I just knew that he wasn't the kind of guy who would go out of his way to be devious. Like, okay. I, I really don't mean this as an insult. Like I said, I, I love my dad, definitely a father's girl, but He's the most simple man I've ever met in my entire life. I aspire. I aspire to be as simple as him. I wish I it would be life would be so much better. But he's so simple and he loves my mom so much. There is no way that he would spite not clean a bathroom. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Not within but, his uh, repertoire of <laughs> 
but, but at the same time, and again, this isn't me like roasting my dad. It's so weird how complimenting my dad is like starting to sound like roasting him, but he's also a very average man. He has never been like a top tier earner. Dude is like riddled with health issues, practically disabled, you know, epileptic, uh, has a seizure a year at least. Uh, but you know, that also taught me that the the average simple man can be a great influential figure.